You gotta feel sorry for those poor McDonald's employees. Why is it that their ice cream machines are always broken? It's become such a problem that even McDonald's has joked about it. Now, is this just media hype? Uh, no, it really isn't. To give you an idea of the scale of the problem, over 34% of McDonald's ice cream machines are broken right now in the state of New York. Could this be tied to higher demand? Are the machines not able to keep up? And what about stories of this four-hour cleaning cycle that supposedly leads to all this downtime? Now, one thing we know for sure, the 34% failure rate has nothing to do with the various alien invasions that New York is prone to. But to get to the bottom of this potentially extraterrestrial mystery, we bought our very own ice cream machine. This is the Taylor C709 soft serve ice cream machine. It's functionally identical to what you'll see in McDonald's stores, which means it breaks in all the same ways. We got our very own machine to see how often it does break and if there's a way to fix them. So the way this works is you open this up, which gives you access to your mix tank. This is where your solution would go. And you've got your agitator here that's actually held in place by a magnet. No Hall effect sensors in here. And it mixes your solution. You've got the feed tube here. The mixed solution feeds down through that hole. Now there's a very large compressor in here that's about seven or eight times larger than what you'd find in your fridge at home that pulls the heat out of that liquid solution and helps solidify the mixture, which then gets pushed out through the front and gets served as delicious ice cream, unless something breaks. Now there's only one way to see how this process is going to go, and that's to try and make some ice cream. We're not professional ice cream makers. This is our first time doing this. We're gonna try and do the best we can. The process for the startup should be to power it on, at which point it's telling us it needs to perform a heat cycle. That heat cycle takes about four hours. And if you show up at a McDonald's at three or 4 a.m. and they tell you that their machine is down, it's probably because it's running through this four hour heat cycle. We're gonna go ahead and start that. And now we just wait four hours. Error after error means that I'm constantly having to refer back to the manual. All these issues would be relatively simple to resolve if the manual explained it properly. So what's the problem here? Crappy technical writers? Bad layout? Intentional? After way more than four hours and a lot of consulting our manual, we finally got some ice cream. While these machines are simple to use, tiny errors can cause big headaches. It's no wonder that so many operators end up calling on Taylor service techs to help them with their machines. It turns out that 25% of Taylor's profits come from service technician call-out charges. That's not surprising given that the service techs charge $315 per 15 minutes of a call-out. This smells like a right to repair issue, and it turns out it is. So we summoned Liz Chamberlain, our in-house right to repair expert, and she had a lot to say on this issue and what we're doing to fix it. So. McDonald's ice cream machines are made by this company called Taylor, and Taylor and McDonald's have a long relationship going back to the very start of McDonald's. Uh, and Taylor has had a, a service contract with McDonald's that has meant that they are the only people that can do any repairs on McDonald's ice cream machines. And so what this means is that franchise owners are really dependent on Taylor technicians coming out and fixing the machines. Sometimes that takes a long time, means that machines are down for a long time and it's expensive. And so uh, this company called Kitch with a, a couple of hackers went out and developed this device that's basically a McDonald's error code reader. So the Kitch device would, you know, describe what the error codes mean. So an error code might be, you know, a couple of letters and numbers that you know, you, you may or may not be able to figure out from the manual. It also allowed them to bypass the locks that meant that you, you couldn't do repairs. And franchisees loved it because, you know, suddenly they had a way to get around the, the crazy service contracts and were able to get their ice cream machines up and running more quickly. So uh, McDonald's sent a letter to all of the franchise owners telling them not to use the Kitsch device. <laughs> and because uh, McDonald's has such a, a tight hold on franchise owners, they were kind of bullied into agreeing. So they, they did, by and large, stop using the Kitsch device. Now, just for the sake of argument, let's say we had a device like Kitsch's and understood what all the error codes meant. Would an average person be able to repair a machine like this? Getting into our ice cream machine proved easy enough. Just some flathead screws to remove, the drip tray comes out, and the side panel can come right off. 
A few more of the same screws holds an upper panel leading to the control board. And once that's removed, we can pretty much see all the working parts of our ice cream machine. So right off the bat with the cover off, we can see this giant compressor over here. This thing's about six or seven times bigger than what you'd normally find in your refrigerator at home. And right next to that, we have a one and a half horsepower engine. That thing is massive and it's driving the beater that sits right through the center of this machine that churns the solution that makes the ice cream. That's what makes it more viscous. And then up here we have the power relays, which are controlled by the brains of the machine up here through these boards. They'll send the current where it needs to go through these relays. If there's a failure, an electrical short, a power failure, or a power surge, these things will pop, and that's why the reset switch is integrated into this whole system as well. On the front side of the machine, we have four nut studs that secure the draw lever to the body. Once those are gone, the lever mechanism pulls straight out, which provides access to the beater and the beater shaft. More flathead screws secure the display panel in place, behind which is a splash-resistant rubber gasket held in by four more screws. With the gasket off, we have access to yet another PCB, which is home to a USB interface port that Kitsch would have used. Restaurant equipment is designed to be used day in and day out with as little downtime as possible. And we can confidently say that this ice cream machine is not a complicated piece of equipment, but the downtime that it suffers is well in excess of what's acceptable for industrial equipment. So why are so many of these machines breaking during peak hours? Well, we've identified two issues. One, the machine overheats if it's used too much within a certain time period. This results in mushy goop coming out or the machine completely shutting down and refusing to work until it resets and cools down. And two, the error codes are nonsensical, counterintuitive, and seemingly random, even if you spent hours reading the manual. We could chalk this up to a design flaw that's led to a poor user experience, but given everything we've learned about Taylor as a company, wouldn't you say that the onus is on them to prove that the way they presented these error codes is not maliciously vague? We'd love to be able to make a device like Kitsch that can read error codes on the ice cream machine we have, but we can't because of copyright law. There's this 1998 copyright law called the Digital Millennium Copyright Act that prohibits people from getting around digital locks for purposes of repair or really anything. Um, this is the same law that has made it illegal to fix your Xbox or fix your John Deere tractor. So Congress built in a way to get around unintended consequences of the DMCA. Uh, every three years, you can apply for an exemption to the law for some kind of equipment. And so we've submitted exemption requests like this for uh, tractors and for Xboxes and for smartphones. Uh, and we've won every time we've tried to get an exemption. And this year, we're applying for an exemption for commercial and industrial equipment. So McDonald's ice cream machines and, and other things. But the problem is that even if we get that exemption, we still can't make a tool uh, that we could distribute to people or sell to people that would let them read the read the error codes on their McDonald's ice cream machine. So we're also asking Congress to fix the DMCA, to uh, create an exemption for repair once and for all. So make it possible not only to, you know, hack on these digital locks that make it impossible to do repair for yourself, but also to make tools that make that possible for other people because Farmers are not hackers for the most part. Uh, McDonald's franchise owners are not hackers for the most part. So even though we've won these exemptions and we hope to win this exemption again, uh, unless we get permission to make and distribute these tools, the vast majority of people won't benefit from it. 